What's up, my podcast listeners? This is your host, Rafael Matuszewski, and I'm super excited about today's show because we're going to kind of go back to um, a little bit of nutrition, um, weight loss, fat loss, those kind of topics because I got a pretty good question that started to, to make me think. But um, before we kind of get into that, I got to do some shout outs because one, I've been forgetting like crazy and I feel terrible because I've been getting a really cool um, people listening to my show all over the world. Um, so I have a new number one um, all the way in the state of Ohio, the city of Columbus. Shout out to everyone in Ohio listening to my show. Um, number two, all the way in Florida, the city of Tampa. Shout out to everyone in Tampa listening to my show. And number three, out in the UK, a city named Harpenden. 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 Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, and I honorable mention at number four, I'm going to most likely butcher this. So anyone from Sweden, the city of Malmo, Malmo, sure. Um, so someone from Sweden, please hit me up and let me know how to pronounce that properly. Um, okay today's topic that we're going to get into um someone once asked me to speak about um the topic about what do you do after you know you achieve your goals and you know go into that whole like maintenance stage uh when it comes to weight loss and it's funny because i don't think anyone has really asked me that because i think a lot of us tend to get into that mindset of well if I could lose like another 10 pounds or you know if I could just like lean out a little bit over here where it gets all bunchy or you know if I can just like work the inner thighs a little bit more so that's why it kind of this question kind of came to me and was like there there's more to it why isn't there more people asking about what do I do for maintenance? What do I do when I'm done? You know, like, are you truly ever going to be done? And that's, that's a interesting, like thing to think about because, you know, when people finally make that choice that, you know, I'm ready, I'm going to put my life in, you know, first priority, I'm going to start going to the gym, I'm going to start eating healthier, I'm going to start doing this and that and blah, 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 blah. And you start getting into a routine, you start seeing success, you start feeling better, um, things are moving better, you know, weight is trying to, uh, starting to fall off. And, you know, where, where do you like, put a stamp and go, I crushed my goals, I got there, and now I just wanna maintain them. I don't think we ever really get there. And I remember when I first started in the fitness industry, that was a thing. I remember people going, all right, I'm gonna lose 40 pounds and then I'm just gonna maintain and just keep it off. But whereas now, we want more. We constantly want more. There's something in our brains that you know, once we get something, we don't take the time to like appreciate it, right? Like we, we're guilty of this every single day with, you know, the stuff that we get, like, you know, our society, at least here in North America, we're plagued by consumerism, right? Like you just have to keep getting shit. We still have to keep getting shit. And then we get so much shit that we get to a point where we need to get rid of that shit or place it into a storage locker or a con shipping container because we don't want to get rid of our shit. And then when it comes time to like get rid of it, you're just like, yeah, whatever. This is like fucking throw it out. It doesn't matter anymore. Right. Whereas like maybe other places in the world, people would appreciate it more. Right. So I think when it comes to this question, what we really need to ask ourselves is at what point do we, you know, um, what is the word I'm looking for to truly appreciate a point in time where, you know, our bodies went through a transformation and you go, you know what, that's enough for me. 
I'm going to just keep it off. I'm going to, but th there's, there's another avenue that I want to go down in this episode is like, what is inside your head that is success? What does success look like to you? Right? And I would assume that a lot of people will go down the path of saying, well, not even saying, just thinking like for guys, it's, you know, a dude with a six pack for women. It's what they see on like a magazine cover on Facebook, on any social media. If someone's like a model and that's their full-time job. So when people get into, um, fitness and health, they assume that those are the markers that define success. And it's very strange that that's what, you know, we just jump into, right? Ask anyone and like, you would have to like really unravel why they're trying to get fit and healthy. Like it's going to go down to, um, being able to look like someone on the front of a fitness magazine or, you know, someone who prepped for a movie and they're super ripped, lean, whatever it is, that's what they're assuming that what success is. That's what they want to look like. But that's equivalent to me going, I want to be as good as like a LeBron James in basketball, even though I just play basketball recreationally. You know what I mean? Like if I made myself a goal, like, you know what, I'm going to practice how to play basketball every week. I want to be better at it. I want to be able to play. I want to be, have a better shot. And in my head, you know, for I think most of us, if any of us picked up a sport or any other new hobby, we would just be like, yeah, I want to be able to better playing piano. Say you pick up um, a piano and it's your goal to learn how to play piano. In your head, you're like, yeah, it would be great if I could just like play and like not stumble and have a full song from start to finish and it's just flawless. You're not going to think like, I want to be able to become a successful mu musician just playing piano and I'm going to have record sales and things like that. Like that's like, everyone's like, okay, like that's a little far-fetched. It's the same thing when you assume that when you start exercising that the end goal is to look like a supermodel or a swimsuit model or whatever it is because that's just not going to happen like realistically like you could do it just like you could be the one of the best piano players out there with a lot of time and dedication you have to also think like to become a very very well-rounded piano player you're going to be dedicating a shit ton of time every single day to a point where you don't spend unnecessary time on anything else in life to get to that point same thing with fitness and health like if you look at the rock the dude is nuts he trains non-stop every single day and makes it a priority right so you that might be a general population person that has a full-time job, some kids or some other shit that's going on in your life, you're not going to be able to dedicate like fucking 10 hours a week on fitness and health, like realistically, right? You need to first determine what realistic success looks like, get there and then maintain it. And you know, sometimes people get really into fitness where they're like, you know what, I want to make this even more of a priority. I'm going to, um, a lot more time every week to maybe do a little bit more meal prep, maybe start weighing my food. Cause I want to go into a cut phase in my diet, you know, like things like that. But for the most part, people should have more realistic expectations of how their body is supposed to look like for true success in where you are in your life. And I've talked about this before. Like if you're a general population person, like I mentioned before, and you have a full-time job, you have kids, and then maybe on top of that, you're in the middle of trying to sell your house. Maybe you're in the middle of actually getting a divorce. Maybe you're in the middle of moving across the country to start a new job. Maybe you're, I don't know, at work about to 
start a new project that's going to take a lot more time outside your nine to five. And then on top of that, you're expecting that, you know, you just following along to the gym two to three times a week is going to make you look and, you know, be ready for a magazine photo shoot. Probably not. Because all those things that I just listed come with baggage, if that makes sense. The stress of your kids, the stress of your marriage or your, you know, partner's life, the stress with taking on a new job, the stress that comes with buying a new place, selling a new place, the stress of starting a new job, like it comes with shit. And then you need like time and energy to be put into that in order to, you know, deal with it. And then usually what kind of falls apart is like nutrition, maybe missing a workout and shit falls apart. Things not, things are not perfect. So the people that you see that in your head, you think that's what, you know, true success is when it comes to weight loss and fat loss, those people, that's their full-time job. Now imagine if you could dedicate like 40 hours a week for your body to look better, meaning every single day you're in the gym, probably twice a day, every single day you have time to make food and eat it and make sure it's to the gram of what you should be eating and you're not overeating or under eating to a point where you have time to have enough sleep. Like those people are sleeping like nine to 10 hours a night. Those people also have time for recovery strategies and the list can go on. So it's kind of unfair to yourself to expect that that's what's going to happen. And this is where I think a lot of people fall into that trap of like, say they're going to the gym three days a week and that's like the maximum and that's really tough to get down. And I've seen this in my own personal experience. Like people will dedicate three days a week in the gym and that's like, holy shit, you know, some weeks I don't even know if I can make it. I fucking rush over here after doing X, Y, and Z just to make it here. I'm super stressed out, but I'm here. I'm going to do my thing. And they do that for like years and they don't see the result that they're expecting. Like that fucks up a lot of shit in your head. Like that really fucks you up and it, it demotivates you. But maybe if you were paying close attention enough that, wow, for the last two years, one year, I've been doing three days a week. I feel great. I sleep better. I have more energy and I'm getting a lot of health benefits and it's probably doing a lot of great preventative like measures, like your blood pressure is not going to go through the roof, your cholesterol's in check, you're not going to ever go on any kind of medications. Because like the amount of people that I've trained in the very beginning, like there's a lot of baggage of like terrible health habits that they start with. And over time in those two years or a year that they end up training consistently, that stuff goes away. Like those are huge wins. Like I don't understand why people are not happy with that, but they want more. They constantly want more. Like maybe you're not going to look like a swimsuit model or whatever it is, but you know, you lost six pounds in that one year and kept it off. Like that's fucking amazing. That's six pounds less of you and you gain more muscle and you should be happy with that. Like, I don't understand why people can't be happy with the small stuff, you know? And if you stayed on that course for like the next 10 years, like that's a full body transformation that you're going to keep forever, even though the rest of your life, because again, those three hours that you may be dedicating to your health every week in a span of a whole like year, that's maybe like, I don't know, 0.05% of your life in that one year. Like, and you're expecting that shit is just going to get chiseled without any other stuff. Because outside of those three hours, there's so much other stuff that's going to influence how your body reacts and adapts. And I think people lose sight of that. 
that you know things should just kind of be easy and quick and that's where a lot of people fall out of motivation to kind of keep going because they're like oh, I bust my ass every fucking week in the gym and I don't see what I want to see but we got to change what's in here you got to change what you see is what you think is success because guaranteed if you quit your job and just quit your life con com completely and dedicated like 40 hours a week to your health Guaranteed in like fucking three months, you're gonna look really fucking good because you have the time. But most people don't, right? Like, I always like to refer because I'm like, I love business. If you look at uh, Jeff Bezos from Amazon, like, look at his transformation. Like, he used to be like a little scrawny, nerdy guy, and now he fucking looks like Vin Diesel. But it took him time to get there, right? Busy guy. But he knew the benefit of exercise, so he kept at it. He kept going with it. And, you know, I would assume that around five years of, you know, one hour every single day dedicated to training or some sort of health thing got him to how he looks today. And he, the dude looks pretty fucking, fucking fit. Like, but for some reason, we as human beings assume that we're going to have these huge dividends from exercise and I haven't even like spoke about like diet. I've been just talking about like movement and exercise, right? So let's go back to our three days a week example that I've been giving. On top of that, most of the time, that's like the limit what I see with general population people. When it comes to diet, that takes another toll of time on you so a lot of times I see this a lot people kind of half-ass their nutrition they all say this one phrase I eat pretty good what the fuck does that mean it means you think you eat good like pretty good and you have no idea why you're not seeing what you want to see so then if you actually like audit uh, the person's diet where they think they eat pretty good, this is what usually happens. Number one, when I ask them what a typical day looks like in eating, it's fucking terrible um, in the sense that they don't have enough protein in the day. In the day. Um, they don't eat enough vegetables. Um, usually their sleep sucks because sleep is a huge hormone regulator when it comes to our bodies um, they barely drink any water um, and usually dinner is kind of like spot-on and sometimes they'll skip a meal or two they overeat at dinner they do some late-night snacking but all those things that can improve equal for some reason I eat pretty good it's like no you don't eat pretty good if you are struggling to lose weight or you know tone up whatever the fuck that means um there's more to it there, there's more you can do and i'm not saying this to like offend anyone or make people feel bad but a lot of us are in denial you know if you ate pretty good then you wouldn't be struggling with fat loss you know you need to take the time to actually audit what the fuck you're doing on a daily basis with food because it's just going to add up over time where you might get to a point where it's really, really difficult to reverse all the bad habits you accumulated over the years. And, you know, eating better takes time too. Like, you need to sit down and plan out what you're going to eat for the week. Because what happens is when you're lazy with not planning out your meals or whatever it is, then you kind of fall into like, oh, I'm just going to go like buy something or like, oh, maybe I'll just skip lunch or breakfast or whatever it is. And just, it just kind of like, you just hope for the best. Not, nothing's going to, you know, go to your favor if you're just hoping for the best. If you look at anything in life to be successful in, you need to have some sort of plan. When you don't have an adequate plan and you just like wing it, 
the chances are not very good. <laughs> like, be real. Like, think about it. Everything in life requires some sort of planning in order to finish it, to complete it, to achieve the goal. But for some reason, when it comes to food, people go, oh yeah, I eat pretty good. I had like a salad or something. But it's like, okay, well, when you ate that salad, where did you get it from? How big was it? How much um, dressing did you put on it? Was there any protein? Was there like tortilla chips crumbles on top? Like shit like that, you know? And on top of that, you might have even like bad habits when it comes to like your daily coffee. Like I've done this so many times with clients where, you know, I'll ask them what the typical day is and they'll say, oh, I go to like Starbucks in the morning, Starbucks in the afternoon for my second coffee. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And then when I go ask deeper, I'm like, okay, what, like, what are you getting from those places? And I remember I had this one client where, you know, they would go to Starbucks twice a day. And they, I can't remember the drink, and I always, always forget this, but I took the time to look at the calories. So I remember how they were getting this drink. It was a venti something, something, something. I can't remember for the life of me. But when I calculated how many calories it was in one drink, multiply that by, you know, two per week, and in a month, they were consuming just like right under 10,000 calories just from the drinks alone. And I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> I'm like, this is the lowest hanging fruit. I just asked them, like, would it be possible from going from a venti to a grande? And they were like, yeah. We did that. And in a month, they dropped four pounds. Didn't even do anything else other than do a smaller size. And they ended up making more money that month anyway. And they got to a point where that two drink order went down to, I can't remember what the... It's a tall, yeah, it's a tall in Starbucks. Um, and then they lost another six pounds. It's like your daily like liquid calories too count, right? The daily amount of olive oil that you put on whatever you're cooking with counts. The amount of butter that you put on shit counts. The amount of peanut butter you put on shit counts. Like this is the stuff that you have to think about in order to be successful. Like it, it's planning. Right? Just like how training is planned, but you hire a trainer to have your workout ready set for you and you just have to show up and go do it. But when it comes to nutrition, people are very less likely to take that extra bit of time and they're like, well, I already have a trainer. I don't want to hire somebody else for my nutrition. And like 100%, if you could afford to do it, fucking do it. If not, you have to take the time yourself, right? Like it's just like if I get a flat tire, I can either spend like fucking three hours myself trying to do it or just go and pay somebody to do it in like half the time or even less and it's done, it's good to go and I'm, I'm happy with it, right? So it's either one. So we kind of have this back and forth of a situation where number one, your expectations are too high. If you want to get to those expectations, you need to basically get to a point where you put so much time and effort to get there. But realistically, none of us can do that unless somehow you got offered a movie role to be the next freaking like Captain America and all you have to do in the next eight months is just train and eat um, and get paid for it. But the second piece to this is, you know, being able to celebrate the small wins, right? You being able to walk up a flight of stairs without feeling gassed, like that's fucking huge. You know, you being able to fit in some clothes that you never had before, uh, weren't able to fit in before, that's a huge win. If you have more energy, that's a win. Like these are the things for the general population to, you know, be happy about. Remember, when you get into the fitness like realm and you want to improve your health you can't think like I'm a bodybuilder or figure competitor and I need to see the scale go down every fucking week like that's not you that is not the goal that is not you know success unless you really want to become a bodybuilder or figure competitor then yes that's what you need to go with but for all 99% of us 
we need to have more realistic expectations and if you want to see true change you're gonna to have to put in more effort than you think that you have to so whatever you think for effort that you are going to put forth for your um, health triple it if you're like being serious you know and you wallowing in oh I'm not seeing the result I want like this is like the tough love like it, it's the same thing where you're like oh I don't have any money because I keep spending it fucking save your money so then you can afford things you know what I mean like when the new iPhone comes out you don't have to fucking buy it and then start complaining that you can't afford X Y and Z just don't don't buy it and I know it's easier said than done but these are the things that you need to have in your head and that goes into like other things I've spoken about on my show is like when was the last time you actually turned off everything around you and spent some time in here to work shit out the moment we wake up it's like boom we need to start doing everything it's like all right get ready for work drive the kids to school go to work do my thing I'm driving home picking up the kids going home making dinner eating dinner getting all the kids ready boom I'm in bed I'm going to sleep and it's the same thing the next day in that entire time did you have any moment even for a minute to be like okay what do I need to do like no like no thoughts you're like you're just you're just going right you're not living like in the moment to figure out what's actually going inside your head and just ask yourself like how you're doing like we don't do that anymore so you hoping to lose weight knowing that that's how your day is there's a really low chance for you to be successful you know and I think we need more time to reevaluate things putting things into perspective and priorities and things like that Remember, I always say this analogy. If you saw a fish in a fishbowl not doing really well, what do you do? You change out the water. You change its environment and it, then it thrives. If your environment is not helping you thrive, then you got to change that environment. I'm going to stop it there because I feel like I can talk for like another hour and a half on this, but hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Remember, also, don't be too hard on yourself. You can fucking do this. Like, you fucking got this. Just keep plugging away. Remember, it is a marathon, not a sprint. You just need to keep plugging away baby steps week after week. Be happy with what you've been gaining. Be happy the fact that you're showing up every week. Be happy that you're trying to make a sincere effort. And be patient. Be patient and you fucking got this. Hit the show notes. Add me on Facebook add me on Instagram, give me a five-star review, and I'm going to continue giving you the best fitness and health advice out there on the interwebs. That's it from you guys. Until next time.